couple things positionally in the half guard that we want to be working on. For this, I don't like going to like the traditional like closed half guard. And I don't like going all the way across for like the shin shield position. I like kind of praying my feet, just holding them together here. I don't cross. I'm just going to put my feet together. I like to put my knee right on his belly button. Elbows in, fighting position. Now while we're sitting here, we're working right, all I'm waiting to do is kind of just give myself enough space to kick my leg through and use that momentum of the kick to sit myself up with the underhook. Here. With my head up, my chest up, my hand posted behind my back. Giving myself a good base. Reaching around. If I'm no gi, I'm grabbing the hip. If I'm gi, you can grab the hands, jacket, whatever you want to get your hands on. I'm here. All I'm going to do is reach my outside foot that's posted in the mat over his ankle. Drag his ankle out. Post my foot to the middle. That's going to allow me to drive up and come into the dog fight position that we've worked previously on. First thing we're going to do is just work a real simple double leg across. My hand that's on the hip is going to drop to the ankle. My hand outside is going to grab the knee. I'm going to drive in, getting Riley to his hip. The second Riley gets his hip, I'm going to sprawl my weight, walk to the side, work to take either side control, or if he rolls up, working to take the back. Something we've worked previously, most of you should know this question on it though. Biggest detail in this that we tend to mess up, a couple of them. We all tend to get here pretty well. But a lot of us have a problem of like having our head down here, which is a great way to get guillotine or choke just in general. So I want to have head up, chest up. I want to have my head kind of in his neck or right under his chin. It's going to stop a lot of the unnecessary motion. And it's going to stop a lot of those choking attacks. Because he comes over the top right now to try to choke me. I head up and my chest is up. There's not going to be a lot of great options. <laughs> Another thing that we seem to struggle with, because we struggled with it Tuesday, was the inside foot, my bottom leg here. Whenever I reach over and drag this ankle out, this foot has to unhook so that it can come up. A lot of us were trying to hit this with that new foot hook. It was causing a myriad of problems. So I'm up and out of Reach across. And a lot of us were trying to pull this in like it was a low rope. I'm driving in and blocking. Driving in and blocking. Not dragging that leg. That one allows me to scroll. Walk around. Take the back. Questions on this? Yes, I'm trying to keep that knee pinch. A couple reasons why. If I'm here, Riley. So when I'm here, I have this pinched here. The reason I'm keeping that pinched is a couple. One, I don't want him trying any of the roly poly bullshit. If he can kick this leg out, it, it can start to give me some of that issue. And wrestlers are going to try to start wrestling through this position. Like this isn't an uncommon spot to be in wrestling. So wrestlers are going to start using that leg to do stuff. So when I'm here, I'm more just pinching the block and give myself that time to drive through. So yes, I am pinching. Other questions on this position? Like I said, the basic getting up to that dog fight that's going to give us a nice options bar and then a great way to be packed. Right. One more time. Here's Mr. Riley. Cross, I sit up, boom, in. Drag that ankle out, put to the mat. Drive up, and come to my knees. Ankle, knee, drive across. Hey, yo. Crawl. Then side control. Or he goes to turtle, take the back. Ready? Driller out. What? I'm here with Mr. Riley. Boom. I'm framed up, I'm protecting myself well. One thing we can do is lose this underhook. I did notice that a couple times, like as we're sitting up, we're losing that underhook. Realize, guys, this, this works exclusively if you have the underhook. All right. So, once I'm here, boom, I drag that ankle out. Now, let's assume that Riley doesn't suck at jujitsu. Like, I did give him a blue belt on accident one day because I had been drinking. <laughs> 
he starts to counter and kind of whiz her in, and I don't, it's not really appreciated. And that's going to make driving across the knee or the ankle really hard. So all we're going to do is I'm going to just use that force and momentum to take him over. I'm going to dive this hand in my head. In an ideal world, you're scooping his ankle. Real world, you're probably going to get the knee seven times out of ten. But I'm always shooting to scoop this ankle here. As I'm doing that, he's wizarding down real hard. I drive in, and he's cross. That then allows you to come out on top, sprawl. Once again, walk to the side if you get him back. Wonderful. Always a good day to get some looks back. If, if only we had that one. So I'm here, I kick myself up, post. Another thing, I'm keeping head position here this entire time. Even here, I'm still head positioned in. Because as he starts to counter there, all I'm going to do is drop my head, shoot my arm, roll, take him through. That then allows me to come up. Now you're in side control. Unnecessary violence as needed to complete your goals. Questions on this. It's a real simple roll through setup's the same. The only thing about this is this cannot be a move where you're like, I think I'm gonna roll. I, 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 it's gotta be. He's countering, fucking go. It's gotta be one of those. Person on the top gives some downward pressure, make it real. When you're doing this, you can't just be kind of a floppy fish. You gotta kind of put some shoulder pressure in and drop your weight. Using your pressure to hit that roll so I'm here with Riley. I'm blocking. Sit myself up. Get my position. Drag the ankle. Get in. And I'm even going to push in like I'm trying to hit that ankle. He drives down. Pull. Pull. Alright. Questions on that? So I'm here, and we're in this position. Now I come up, boom, I drag out, and once I get here, let's say for whatever reason I just don't feel like I can drive across, and I don't feel like the roll through is going to work. A position I like to work out of is called deep pack. What it is is when you roll through here, you scoop at the knee, drive across, and you get Riley to kind of float across the top of your hips. The reason I like this position is it has a great options bar and a pretty low success rate of countering if you know the full options. So we're going to run through a couple of the options just so you guys can see them. But once we're here, the biggest thing is keeping your knees above his knees and keeping this kind of rocking motion. Go. And white and blue belts, I want everyone working this tonight. White belts, you didn't get it Monday. I don't want you guys to see it tonight. So I'm here, rocking back and forth. One of the most common counters that a lot of people like to do is they like to post this foot in the mat and go heavy onto this knee. Makes rocking back and forth a lot harder, but it messes with their balance. So one of the easiest sweeps to do out of this is called the waiter sweep. All we're gonna do is either reach and grab the pants, or I like to scoot a little bit and actually scoop up his ankle. Here, like I'm a waiter. Holding a tray. Hence why I got its name, right? There's method to the madness, boys and girls. Once I'm here, all I'm going to do is I'm gonna rock forward, rock back. And I'm not taking him straight back, but I'm kind of taking him towards where his butt and hips are. Here. Now, once we get here, you're a gentleman, you don't stretch here. You're an asshole, you do stretch just a little bit. But I'm here, my hand goes from hooking the ankle to the near side hip. I come up, I give Riley a good groin stretch, step back. So boom, we're here, I step up, come up, right? Boom, I work up, get here, I drive across, it doesn't work. No, I'm not confident in the roll through, or let's say you get stuck in the middle of the roll through. Here. 
That'll happen sometimes. All we're going to do, bring our hips up, scoop the ankle, drive our feet up, up. Once we're here, the hand goes to the mat. And not reaching across. I see a lot of people when they do this, they'll like reach this hand across. Reach it to the near side hip, close this hand here. Up. Stretch just that little bit. Separate. Questions on this? Questions on this stuff? Um, when you're, so after you get the leg in the leader, um, can you, because I saw the first time you grabbed the back of his belt, you pulled him, and yes, the second time you were just on his hip. Yeah, he's not really. D versus no D. So it's a, sometimes I play with grip, sometimes I don't. So try it both ways. I'm generally going to be playing more of a, whether I'm in the pajamas or not, I play no gi except for the gi jokes. So I'm generally just going to be scooping the hip. If the belt or the jacket's there and you want to get a hold of it, congrats, it's a tool, you can use it. So make sure you're not real one. Other questions on the waiver sheet? Walk through it one more time. So I get here and I get Riley up, right? Couple of the bigger details. Make sure that we're scooping the ankle. And if you are going to grab the belt, we're jacking. The pants is not going to be where you need it to be. So I'm just going to reach up and like grab mid back. That helps quite a bit. And if his belt is still tied, you can grab it too. And the other thing, do not take them straight back. You're extending your knees just that little bit. Take them this way. This hand into the hip. Post your neck stretch. Questions? Watch out, lock it up. One, two. Late through early purple is when this shows up in the crib. So if you're struggling with this, realize you probably should be. No one in this room outside of me and four, you should probably be well first in this. And it's not a big part of either of our games. So even then, we're going to still struggle with it a bit. Alright? And realize we're going to work this probably till Christmas. Like we're going to be in a deep half or affiliated position. Alright? So I'm here. Boom. I kick up. I do all that fun stuff, right? I get here. But let's assume Riley still doesn't suck at jujitsu. But I've already waiter sweeped him. So he's going to post this knee down. He's going to drag this knee up. And he's going to try to put weight over my hips here. He's going to be like, ah, I don't want this to happen. So I'm here. All I'm going to do is just a real simple wrestling ankle. You can grab the pants and go. Or you can grab under the ankle. All I'm going to do is pass his ankle in front of me. Big detail here. Unless you just want to get fucking knee bar. Get this knee out. Post pull. Once you're here, a couple options. You can either keep passing that ankle and take the back, or if you're more inclined to play footsie, you can play that hand. So once you get to here, then you can escape that knee and start playing into fuck you lot, bang ball. So I'm here, boom, I come up. All that fun stuff. I roll, Riley gets this ankle up. All we're doing, guys, I like to cut just under the ankle here. Pass, get my knee out. Once we're here, dealer's choice of what you want. For those of you who are like dirty, dirty people, who like to play ankles, guess what? You're in the game. It's a foot race at this point. Fuck Riley's ankles and his knee directly. For those of you who aren't quite as versed in that, both just keep passing that ankle. And one of the fun moves you can hit from here, if you hit it right, you do end up actually in a twister position. <laughs> Most of you can't hit that in any rule set you do, but it's still fun. So when I'm here, I sit up, I drag the ankle out, come up. We're here, Riley posts that, I come here, here, and then as I reach back, I bring them back in, and I, that helps me set up the twister. For those of you who are like, what's a twister? Look at Eddie Brown's little twister, it's one of the two moves you can learn from him. But it's, it's a spine lock that allows you to drag your ankles out this way, 
and his spine this way, and it twists his spine up. It's very illegal for 99% of competition, except for pro MMA and high-level black belt tournaments. A little It's not. It's. I just always struggle. They they tend to do a lot of chains that just don't make sense. Why is that legal for us? It's a different setup, and it's not purposely manipulating the spine. And you have to like wait to get all your near fall before you even lock around the head, and you yeah. can't really show the back after this. Yeah. They, they'll, it, they're still very willing to stop that. For sure. That all but college wrestling, they will stop that pretty quickly. College, they'll let you get twerked up a little bit, but high school and even many college tournaments, they're still going to step in and stop that. If you really, if you can hold it, it's an applying pressure is where they're going to step. I mean, all, all, in wrestling, all you're going to do is elevate the head off the mat and their backs and their flies. It's going to be out where it's not going to be like that. If you, uh, when you're in this position, yeah. and you keep the legs too loose, you're going to have to get a hold of them. Times people will step over your head and then try to cut the knee back and then drive back into you. Pressure. <laughs> yeah, you can't be, if you're going to pull deep half, this is not a lazy goal. So if you're like, man, I like playing a real slow methodical, lazy guard. DPAP is not is not for you. Please exit stage left. But, if you want to play something active, open up the game and have a good options bar here, there's a lot of good that can happen. Because when I'm in DPAP with Riley, realize, depending on how he counters, gives me an option. He counters up, I can go over and into D, or I can go over into the back. If he posts the other foot, I can go to that waiter speed. If he, you know, tries to do kind of a split balance thing, which some guys will do, that's what we're going to work next week. And you can go into X guard, and then into fun shit. What we're doing next week is we're going to keep working D path and then into X. So if you if you're like, man, I want to open up the game a little bit, play some activity. These next couple weeks are going to be for you. I realize in the beginning of the year we kind of reset back to ground zero. I'm trying to give you guys some fun and excitement until then. Alright, questions on this? Pass that ankle, either go back into the feet or work on taking the back. What?